Hey there, this is Nick from Income Digs, and today we're talking about QuickBooks Online for real estate investing, specifically for those of you who flip properties and how we're going to treat the financials of that flip, whether we put those on a profit and loss, a PL statement, or a balance sheet, and how to potentially transfer between the two because there are reasons to have those expenses and that revenue on a PL versus a balance sheet. I want you to feel comfortable with doing it either direction and moving it back and forth, okay? So this is a deep dive based on questions we're getting within our bootcamp, Real Estate Accounting Bootcamp, and we have that available. Go check that out on our website, IncomeDigs.com. We also have a free mini camp, QBO mini camp, directly uh, geared toward real estate investors and their bookkeepers. Two hours of free training. You can sign up for that as well. But let's dive into the topic at hand today, which is specifically on flips. So those properties that we buy, do some renovations to, and then we sell relatively quickly. doesn't have to be like a super quick turnaround within the month or anything like that, but um, generally taking you know months, not years, okay? So when we're thinking about flips and bookkeeping, the very common question is, am I going to treat the expenses that I incur on this flip on my P&L, my profit and loss, or the balance sheet? All right, eventually, we want our flip to land on our PL. This is very, very common. This is typically what we want to do. We want to be able to see on a PL how did that project go? How much money did I make versus how much money did I spend? What's my profit and loss? Okay. So we can make use of the projects portal within QuickBooks Online. That's one of the key functionality in QuickBooks Online Plus if you have that to make use of that projects portal for your flips and get that on the PL. That's great. But what we want to be able to do is understand, as I mentioned here in this last point, how to transfer to our balance sheet for one, year-end tax prep, okay? And or making our reports look a little bit more accurate. So the problem that arises is when we buy a property and then we renovate it, and we're just spending, spending, spending. If we put everything on our P&L and just leave it there, then what it does is it shows this gigantic loss throughout the year until we sell it, okay? So if we get to tax time, if we get to the end of the year, we don't wanna take all those deductions in the year that they were incurred if we haven't sold the property yet. We wanna stash those on our balance sheet for later so that we can, at the end of the project, whatever tax year we sell it in, we can collect all of that financial information and put that all in the same tax return. Okay, so we wanna be able to have the flexibility to move those expenses to our balance sheet. And what I'm gonna show you today is how we can do that really, really easily with the journal entry, okay? So how do we prepare for this? So the first thing we do is we make sure we have our profit and loss accounts in our chart of accounts. That's eventually where we're gonna get everything. And I'm gonna to demonstrate today, that's where we put everything initially as well. When we incur that first expense, the purchase of the property, the first renovations, the, the taxes that we pay, we're typically gonna stash those onto the P&L to begin with, okay? That's typically a good way to do it because we're able to use the projects portal. And as I'm gonna show you with products and services, we can map those super detailed list of you know rehab categories all to that profit and loss. We're gonna add mirroring accounts on our balance sheet. So kind of the equivalent, whatever we're tracking on the P&L, we're gonna have similar, they don't have to be exact, but similar categories on our balance sheet as well under inventory, okay, under an asset account. And then we're gonna add our projects and classes. I'd like you to think about using both if you can, okay? So projects are really good for looking at the pro uh, profit and loss and classes help us to gain some uh, organization around our reports so they can help keep things really nice and neat by column. You don't have to use both. If you can, I recommend it. So we're going to create the class for each project. We're going to create a customer and project for each project, which is actually a sub customer to prepare for this entire thing. Okay. So let's see that in QuickBooks and uh, get to it. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to pull up a balance sheet as of 2018, which should be pretty much blank. Yes. Okay. So it's pretty much blank other than I have cash. Okay. So I recorded a really simple deposit of cash into my checking account just to kind of demo this. So I had a contribution come through from both myself and a business partner uh, just to make this really, really simple. We got some cash in the bank and we haven't done anything yet. All right. And we're going to record the purchase of a flip. We're going to record some expenses to it. And I'm going to show you exactly how this works. Now I'm going to demonstrate this all back in time. I'm, I'm recording this in 2023, but um, just to keep it simple, I'm pulling up a balance sheet as 2018 so that we can keep it really isolated into this example. Okay. So I have my investment analysis here. And when I say that most flips are going to eventually end up on the P&L, this is why. Because we as investors are typically analyzing properties on a profit and loss level where we're saying something like this. Okay, So if we look at this profit summary, 
We're saying I'm going to sell the property for 625. I bought it for 250. I had some buying costs. I had some rehab costs, some holding costs, some selling costs, and then eventually I made some profit. Okay. Now yours isn't going to look exactly like this necessarily. It can if you'd like to. If you'd like to download this, we have it available for free at IncomeDigs.com. Go ahead and do that. This is an analysis worksheet, but this is just an example of some of the categories that we as flippers are going to be budgeting for, right? We think we're going to make this. We have to be able to set up QuickBooks to match that so that we can see how we did from the actual perspective. And we're going to be comparing budget versus actual. Okay, so we're going to use this exact example and we're going to play it out a little bit. So let's say that I bought this thing for $250,000. Let's record that purchase. Now, as you know, actually, before we record that purchase, what did I say about prepping? Let's make sure our chart of accounts are in line. Now, I know they are, but let's, let me show you that. So when we look at the chart of accounts, for the profit and loss, we want all of our expense categories for the flip to show up under cost of goods sold. Okay, so I'm going to go to, I think on page two, I have my cost of goods sold. And notice here, I got my purchase price, buying costs, holding costs, rehab costs, selling costs, all right there. Now, I am sorting them this way because I also have long-term rentals, so I'm, doing, I'm going alphabetically here. Now, I also have my debt service. Now, what I typically do with debt service is I put it as an other expense, and that gives me the benefit, as I'm going to demonstrate for you today, of showing a net operating income versus a net income. Okay, it's, it calculates that for me because a lot of times, especially when we partner with outside investors, we want to be able to keep a really clean profit line without our debt service because that debt service might be our burden as, as one, of the, um, one of the investors. All right, so I have my cost of goods sold. And as I mentioned at the beginning, we also want to have mirroring accounts on our balance sheet. And those are going to show up as inventory. So I have an inventory asset called flips in progress, and then I have buying costs, debt service, holding costs, purchase price, rehab. Now they're not in the same order. I should probably do that, but they're all there. All my accounts are there. Now these are gonna stay relatively empty until I make that balance sheet transfer. Okay, so now we gotta make sure we have class and customer set up. So if I go to my projects, when I say customer, it's really a project is a sub-customer. So here I have that 264 union. This is the exact one I'm gonna de demonstrate. Here's my project, nothing to it yet, okay, but it's ready to go. And then on my classes, I'm gonna go to uh, all lists and I'm gonna look at my list of classes and make sure I have this 264 union there. And it's right here, ready to go, okay? So let's create this transaction now. For every what I call major transaction in your books, that's the purchase of property, the refinance of property, or the sale of property, I recommend you use a journal entry. Even if it's a simple transaction, I think a journal entry helps to force us to ensure we're thinking about everything, we're designating class appropriately, project if it makes sense, and we're taking what should be a really serious transaction for our business and giving it just that little bit of extra attention, let's create a journal entry. Even if you have a bank feed transaction that's coming in, you can always match to that, okay? Use a journal entry and then match to that. So what I mean by that, like let's say that you have a transaction in your bank feed. For example, these are all new here. Let's say like I have this 54,000, okay? That's the purchase of property, like the cash I had to bring to closing. You can create that on your journal entry and then come here and match that. That's a topic for another video. We have videos on that banking feed, but that's I really want you to get in the habit of using journal entries. Don't be afraid of them. All right, let's get after this transaction. I've been talking about it enough. Let's create the purchase of property. Journal entry. We're going to do this again as of 2018. I'm going to say that I bought this property in 10-1-2018. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say that I spent money on the purchase price, right? So whatever the closing price of the property was, cost of goods sold, I'm going to debit that. Let's say it was 250000 Okay, and I can put here purchase price in the description. I'm going to absolutely indicate under name, I'm going to indicate the project. 264 Union Flip, I'm going to do class as well. Okay, so I have my purchase price. Let's say that I had some buying costs, so some closing costs associated with the purchase. I'm going to list those as buying costs. And those are going to be your appraisal fee, your uh, title fees, your um, attorney fees, all that kind of stuff. $7,500. let us just say that that is my closing cost. Now, you could itemize those out if you had a detailed closing statement. We're going to keep it simple here and just do closing costs. Again, I'm going to label it as 264 Union Flip and 264 Union in my class right there. Okay, so I got my buying costs, uh, holding costs. So uh, I want you to separate out any holding costs. So that would be any taxes that you're paying, insurance that you're paying, 
utilities are going to be separated out as well. So sometimes on a closing statement, you might owe prorated taxes. Those are going to show up here. If you get a credit for them, they're going to show up as a credit side. Okay, so this could just be taxes and utilities, whatever. Now, if you want to separate those out further, you can. You can have a sub account for tax. You can have a sub account for utilities. That's absolutely fine. Let's say that I got a private money loan for this. So I'm going to do private money loan. Um, we're going to say lender one lent me $300,000. So I'm just going to write down loan here. Now, I'm just going to put this to the customer. I can tell you why later, but really, the reason why I wouldn't put project here is because the project is only going to pick up P&L transactions. Okay, so these are all cost of goods sold. Those go on the P&L and therefore indicating the project is really important. The private money loan is balance sheet only and therefore it's not even going to show up as the customer. So it's not really worth it to put it as a project. Okay, I should have said it's not, it's it's not going to show up as a project, so it's not worth it to put it as a project. We can put it as a customer. Let's say that we had construction escrow. So very, very common, we get a private money loan, and some of that is withheld for the renovation expenses. Okay, so let's say that they're holding back $75,000, and this is initial construction escrow. Okay, again, balance sheet, there's really no point for me to put it onto the project, so I'm going to put it on the balance sheet and track class here. And then the last thing that would happen, again, simple transaction. Actually, let's say debt service. Let me do one more. So debt service, let's say I owe some points on that. Okay, so let's say that it's like 300,000 times 2%. I can do that math right within QuickBooks. Hit the tab button, $6,000 in points. This is a P&L, so I'm going to make sure it goes to the project. And then the last thing I'm going to do is cash at closing. Okay, so this would be coming out of my checking account. And this is where... I showed you where I had that uh, transaction on my banking feed. It was like that 54000 If that's the case, oh, I don't have that uh, in there. Okay. If that 54000 is here, put it here and you'll be able to match it to your bank feed. Again, that's a, that's a topic for a different time. Let's just get this on the books here. And this is just cash at closing. So it's going to come out of my checking account, balance sheet transaction. I'm going to leave it as customer. I, I'm going to put class here. Now, I kind of have an issue of putting, um, when we put checking account and a journal entry to class, it can be a little bit confusing. Again, different video for a different time. I'm gonna keep it consistent by keeping it right there. Let's save and close and see what happens to my balance sheet. I've got a little bit less cash. I've got my construction escrow. I've got my loan on the books and I have a negative net income of 265,000, which should play perfectly with, if I go to my project, I should see 264 union, $265,000. Perfect, right? And so this is what we as flippers are kind of used to when we incur those expenses, we put them on our P&L. All right, now we're going to incur more expenses as we move through this project, right? We're going to spend money on rehab, okay? So when we spend money on rehab, I'm going to encourage you to utilize products and services. Again, different video on that. We can link to it in the notes here. If you're not using products and services, I really want you to. That's going to be where we establish really detailed like categories for all the work that we're going to do. And then we map them. So like rough electrical, for example, we map rough electrical to rehab costs, which is an expense account, cost of goods sold account. Now we can use that to show our renovations. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to just going to stick on the projects portal right here, go to 264 union flip. Let's record some rehab expenses. So as I incur expenses, I am going to pay for those and I'm going to log them. Let's say 10, 5, 2018, I got the property and I'm starting to work. Okay, so maybe I'm doing um, some demolition. Okay, maybe I spent $5,500 on demolition. Here, customer project, 264 Union. Put it as a class as well. Save and let's do save and close. And this should populate in right here. Okay, so because demolition was mapped to my rehab costs, it shows up in the right spot on my PL. Okay. I've mapped it appropriately to my rehab costs. And so that, that starts populating into my P&L. All right, great. That's one. Let's create a few more expenses here. So we're going through and we're renovating this property. So 10.5, I did demo. Let's say that 10.12, I did uh, some rough electric. Okay, so 10,500, 264 union flip and class, same thing. Let's save, let's just do save and new, let's do rough plumbing. 
Okay, now notice, by the way, I'm paying for all this stuff out of pocket. This is typically how it works. It's coming from my checking account. I have that construction loan. I do, right? But typically what we're going to do is we're going to pay for things out of pocket first, and then we're going to request a reimbursement, a draw. I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's say we spent $15,500 on rough plumbing. All right, let me save and close, see where we're at. Now, quickly, I'll show you the benefit of doing this products and services. Notice how rehab cost is nice and neat here, 31,500. I can drill down into that. And now on this report here, I can group by products and services. And that shows me a really nice, neat by category what I'm spending, all right? So it's really neat to do products and services. I recommend it. Part of why we like to track to uh, the profit and loss to start. Now, let's say that that kind of rounds out my month, okay? I've spent all of that money, that $31,500, and maybe it's time to request a draw, okay? If it's time to request a draw, we do that, and that's separate from expenses. A lot of times we request a draw, and we want to treat that as a rehab expense. It's not. We spend the money typically out of our own pocket from our checking account, from our credit card. It goes here, it goes here, it goes here, and then we just transfer when we get a construction draw. So to show that, let's go back to my balance sheet. And notice on my balance sheet, nothing's changed with like my assets other than my checking account's been going down as I've been spending money. Construction escrow hasn't changed yet. My loan stayed the same, okay? But my net income has gone down. Now my loan will stay the same unless I make principal payments on it, okay? Now I might owe interest. Hard money loan, you know, kind of depends how it's set up, but you could owe principal and interest. You could just do interest. If it's just interest, let's say I made a payment, debt service, Okay, let's say I made a $500 interest payment. That is not going to do a single thing to my loan. Okay, I'm going to click save and close that. My loan's going to be exactly the same, but I'll go right back into that in a second. My loan's going to be exactly the same, $300,000, but it goes down on my net income. However, if you did make a principal payment, okay, so if you did spend, let's say, some money was to interest and some was to principal, depending on how your loan is set up, right? So that $500, maybe some of that was principal, some of that was interest. So let's say like 400 of it was interest and, and the rest was principal. So that would go against that hard money loan. Because this is a balance sheet transaction, this isn't looking up. Okay, let's save and close that. Principal will come off. Great. Okay, so my balance sheet is really still just cash and construction escrow. If and when I got a draw, so that 31500 I spent, let's say that I got a draw. You can do a journal entry for it. You can do a deposit. Let's do a journal entry. Okay, so let's say the end of the month, 10-31-2018. Let's say that I got a draw from the construction escrow. All we're going to do is say, all right, from construction escrow, it's going to go down 31500 to 264 Union. Balance sheet transaction. I don't need to use customer. It actually gives, gains me nothing. And where did that money go? It went into my checking account, right? Nice and easy. And so this is typically how we're getting paid back for our construction, okay? So we're spending that money. We're getting reimbursed here, and it's going down on my construction escrow. All right. So now let's think about profit and loss and balance sheet. Now, at a very minimum, I want you to be transferring this net income to your balance sheet at the end of the year. But you could also, if you'd like, transfer it on a month by month basis. So it's up to you as the business owner, as the key stakeholder. If this net income is throwing off your books, and this is especially pertinent if you're doing other types of activity in your books, this looks really bad, right? Oh, negative 269,900, okay? That's crazy bad. I'm not doing well. Well, we know we're doing fine. We know we have an asset that we're eventually going to sell for more money than that, okay? But we need to do something with it. And so what we do is a journal entry whereby either at the end of the year or at the end of the month, we, we take a snapshot of this and we journal it over to the balance sheet. So if I were to do it monthly, I could say, hey, 10-1-2018 to 10-31-2018, 10 what does that P&L look like? How much did I spend this month? Okay, I can take this snapshot, I'm going to take a screenshot of it, okay, and I can move this over. 
Okay, so how do we do that? We do a journal entry as of the date we wanna make that move. Now it's up to you if you're gonna do this monthly, quarterly, or maybe just the end of the year, it's okay if you do it just the end of the year. We're gonna first zero out all the expense categories. So the first one is my purchase price. I'm just gonna list them to start. I got my purchase price, I got my buying costs, I've got my holding costs, rehab costs, and debt service. All right, we're just gonna zero all those out. Okay, so I'm gonna credit them. So my purchase price, 250,000. Buying cost, 7,500. Holding cost, 1,500. And this is just as of the date. So as of this date, what are my balances? That's why I took that snapshot. Rehab cost, 31,500. And my debt service is 6,400. Okay, now I'm going to offset that with the inventory items that I've added already, right? So remember, we are looking at the chart of accounts and I had those categories for flips in progress. The search is not working right now. Okay, so my flips in progress is gonna show up as a sub account of flips in progress. So I have my purchase price. I have my buying costs. I've got my holding costs. I got my rehab costs as well and debt service. So I have a total of 10 lines here, okay? Where I'm going to credit the exact I'm going to debit the exact opposite. So 250,000 to purchase price, 7500 to buying costs, 1500 to holding costs, 31500 to rehab and 6400 to debt service. Okay? Now I'm going to definitely indicate my class here. Unfortunately, we don't have a way to click and drag these down, so I gotta make all these manually, but I'll do it quick. And so what I'm doing here is I'm just, I'm taking the entire project and I am moving things over so that on my balance sheet and like my business as a whole, I don't show a gigantic negative. And what I'm gonna do right here, this is really cool, in that I'm just gonna track to customer on the name. What that will do is it'll keep my project clean. And so I call this getting the best of both worlds. I'll be able to see at the project level that really nice, neat, organized way of understanding how much I've spent so far. Yet on my balance sheet and like the big picture of my business when I'm analyzing how is my business doing as a whole, I'm going to see a little bit more of a realistic view in that all this money I'm spending on this property, it's still my asset, right? I'm gaining the benefit of that asset, okay? And so this is gonna take all those expenses at 296,900 when I save and close this. It should zero out that P&L. And if I go back to my balance sheet, okay, now all that 296,900 shows up as flips in progress. It shows value to my business, okay, which is, a more realistic view of everything, right? It zeroes out the net income. Now it zeroes out the net income at the high level if I'm looking at my entire business and I maybe have a bunch of projects going on, it zeroes it out for that project, but guess what? On the projects portal, because I didn't on that journal entry list the actual project, my flip is still 100% intact. So I have the 296,900 and I can keep going. I can keep recording expenses and at the end of the year, as I'm gonna do, we're gonna do one more transaction to get the marginal difference in there, okay? So we're getting the absolute best of both worlds. I'll just show you two. Um, so if I go to my balance sheet here, you know, I'm tracking all this stuff by customer, by class. So now what that allows me to do is I can display columns by classes. If I had multiple going on, I'd be able to see, you know, what was owned by each, okay? And that looks really, really nice. The reason I suggest you use classes and customer is because unfortunately when I do customer, it's gonna show me all these extra columns that I don't really need, right? It's got the customer, it's got the project, it's got the total, it's really annoying, okay? So, great, I've now tracked nicely. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna spend some more of that construction escrow. Let's say I spend another $20,000 uh, on my renovation, or 20, let's do 23.5, let's do another 23.5 on my renovation. So let's say that I spend uh, as of November, 30, 30th, 2018, say I just spend money on drywall or sheetrock. 
So let's do 23,500, and this is going to 264 Union. Save and close that. Okay, so now what happens is my PL starts to get negative again. And so all I have to do is every month, now I can go into this exact, this exact transaction. I can drill down to find it. This, this one right here, that journal entry, I can copy this and now use it for 11.30, 2018, okay? Now I'm not gonna do all these values this time. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do zeros for most of it. The only thing I've spent money on is rehab costs, right? But I can keep my template here pretty much, right? And just say, hey, I spent uh, 23,500 on rehab costs in November. So once we do it once, you know, all that recording of the name and the class, all that, that took a long time, right? We only need, now we can copy it. So now if I save and close this, it goes back to a zeroed out PL and my inventory is updated. Okay. Now let's spend, um, let's spend 10,000 more dollars in uh, December. Okay. Let's just do one more and we'll do another escrow draw too. Your escrow draws don't need to be at the same time. Okay, so let's just say we spent uh, December 5th, 2018, I spent some money on painting. Let's say 10,000. I'll save and close. Now let's say we get another draw. So we just spent another, you know, 33,500. So let's do another draw. So that's gonna be another journal entry. Let's say I get it on 12.5 right when I did that, right? So construction escrow. So I think it was uh, 33,500 is what we're gonna do. And that goes into my checking account. And then the very last thing we're gonna do, now what the very last thing we do is the most important, and that is that as of 1231 of the year we're talking about, we have to zero out that P&L if we haven't sold the property yet. Okay, so now my construction escrow is left at 10,000. My uh, net income is a negative 10,000, so I have to do one more, you know, I gotta do one more transaction. So if you're doing this throughout the year, your balance sheet's gonna look like mine is. Some of you though are gonna wanna just say, you know what, it's too much work to do this every single month. I'm just gonna do one at the end of the year. It would, that's fine too. You just gotta make sure at the end of that, that year, you're just tracking that marginal difference. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, I just gotta log that extra $10,000. So I'm just gonna drill down, find that journal entry again, and just create another one, this one at the end of the year. So I'm gonna copy. Okay, and I'm gonna just go right here, 12, 31, 2018. I had another $10,000 that I have to move. Okay, and so what we're gaining here is the absolute best of both worlds. I have my balance sheet that is nice and tight. And my P&L is empty for this flip because I don't wanna deduct anything yet. I'm gonna wait till I sell it. In this case, it looks like next year, I'm gonna sell this thing and, um, and it's going to um, come off. Okay. So that's where I stand at the end of this tax year. I've got my inventory nicely. I'm not going to depreciate it or anything. I'm going to sell this property next year. Okay. So what I'm going to do in a follow-up video, because this one got pretty long is I'm going to show you that, okay, once we move on to the next year, what do we do to finish the project off and eventually sell it? And we have a few different ways we can go about it. We can potentially move all this back to the PL if we don't care about it being here or we can, um, we can leave it where it is, okay? So I'm gonna have a follow-up video. It's gonna come out within a week or, or less, okay? We'll link to it as well to show you that other side of it. Check out all the free resources we have available. We have tons of templates, free courses, all that kind of stuff available at IncomeDigs.com. If you're interested in our end-to-end -end training, Real Estate Accounting Bootcamp, it's awesome. We're getting a lot of great feedback on that. Check that out as well. Make sure you use the code YouTube50 to get 50 bucks off of it. Uh, but check back here. Let me know if you have questions, comments, and we'll have a follow-up coming out very, very shortly. I appreciate your time. Appreciate your attention on this uh, long but detailed video. I'll see you on the next video.